Have you bought a router labeled Y56 yet for your VR gaming or are you still using a last gen router? Before you do, you should watch this video. When I first bought my Quest 2, I was using a previous generation router, the TP-Link AC1750 aka Archer 7 that functioned on a 5 GHz frequency with speeds up to 1300 megabytes per second and my internet at the time was Spectrum with approximately 400-ish down and 20-ish up. Trying to use Meta's wireless AirLink system, I struggled to get a smooth and consistent gameplay, especially with games like Beat Saber, so I began looking for a solution to my problem. I started hearing about these things Wi-Fi 6 routers, and what really sold me on them was a video I stumbled across by Thrillseeker where he was basically listing all of his preferred accessories for the Quest 2, and one of them was a Wi-Fi 6.0 router. Now, he did not go into the nuances of the Wi-Fi 6.0 router, i.e. the frequencies and speeds and such. And at the time, I was pretty ignorant of such things too, and was more focused on looking for something that said Wi-Fi 6.0 on the box, which is kind of stupid, and something within my price range of $50 to $80. So I ended up buying the TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 router AX1800 aka Archer AX21 running on 5 GHz frequency with speeds up to 1200 megabytes per second. But at the time I didn't know all this as silly me it said Wi-Fi 6 on the box and cost just a tad more than my other router so hey yay. I started developing this video as a versus my old router versus this Wi-Fi 6 router and quite frankly, I expected the Wi-Fi 6 to kick the Heine off the other router, but surprisingly, it didn't turn out that way. I ended up learning quite a bit, and hindsight being what it is, kind of leads me to wish I had taken the time to learn all this before, and maybe I would have made a better purchasing decision. So what I'm going to do is pass out all the information on to you, and hopes that I can help you make that better purchasing decision. But first, we are going to show our comparisons between these two routers, using the game Speed Saber, Half-Life Alex, and Lone Echo 2. One final thing before we jump to these comparisons, my internet currently has been upgraded to fiber with approximately 919 down, 345-ish up, and in addition, the location of my routers via my play space, well, there's the routers on the wall there, and over here is where I play. So with all that being said, let's check out these comparisons. I recorded the Beat Saber first, and quite frankly was surprised by the results. First thing that caught my eye was both were running on the 5 GHz frequencies. For some reason my brain had gone to a Wi-Fi 6 router runs on 6 GHz frequencies. That is clearly not the case, well, not the case with some nuance, which we will discuss in a bit. Second thing I noticed is that while my speeds were better with the AX1800, it didn't really improve my performance much. My Pico 4, which has become my daily driver, and which I use for the testing here, is set at 90Hz, and in games they pretty much maintain that, with the exception of the Lone Echo 2, which we will also discuss later. Now settings wise, I'm running everything with Steam through Virtual Desktop, so I'm looking at my settings here on Virtual Desktop, and as you can see I got the FPS set at 90, quality high, bitrate max, etc, etc. And on the streaming side of things, uh, FPS is 90 again, bitrate max, etc, etc. Here I have the VR graphics quality set with Ultra, but I messed around with Godlike mode versus High mode, and I didn't really notice a performance impact beyond Godlike mode looks much better, so I ultimately just set it at Godlike mode. In-game quality I had set to max, with the exception of Lone Echo 2, which I had to set to low, for both routers, which still looked fine and felt good, 
and my frame rate dropped down to the mid 40s for both routers but it still looked good and felt good so there was no issues there. So basically what we have here is two routers, one allegedly a higher end one and yet they both performed the same. Which begged the question, was it worth it to spend more money on this other router? And at what point, cost-wise, could I notice a difference? Comparing the settings that you can tweak in these two routers, there wasn't a lot that I can mess around with inside the A7. Unless I'm missing something here, please comment below. And in the AX1800, I was able to change the channel width, channel, and the mode, which I have set to the recommended. Now browsing Amazon, I found much more expensive routers with much higher speeds, but I find myself again asking the question, the higher speed didn't really seem to make a difference between these two. Would it really make a difference with a more expensive model? And then I asked the question, what about the six gigahertz thing? Well, as it turns out, there are indeed routers that use the six gigahertz frequency. They are called the Wi-Fi 6E. E being extended into the 6 GHz frequency. The cheapest of these I could find was the TP-Link AXE 5400 Tri-Band Wi-Fi 6E router or the Archer AXE 75. Currently you can find that on Amazon for $159. This one lets you run on the 6 GHz frequency at 2402 megabytes per second. Still found myself asking the question though, would it improve performance? Well, in one way, I believe it may. One thing I experience quite frequently as I live in an apartment complex with loads of other Wi-Fi signals all out there competing with the channels available is congestion to the point where my speeds can dip as low as three to 400 megabytes per second and sometimes even a little lower, usually on the weekends and in the evenings. Which brings me to the one benefit Wi-Fi 6E could bring. To quote an article I read on Netgear's website, the main difference between the two is simply the new, unused 6 GHz band. Wi-Fi 6E will still provide you with the fastest speeds and more connected capacity for more devices, but the addition of more spectrum and high bandwidth channels helps relieve congestion and interference some of the biggest Wi-Fi issues today, which I can definitely attest to that. In addition, they say, no legacy devices on the 6 GHz band. The 6 GHz band is exclusive to Wi-Fi 6E devices. 6 GHz networks don't have to slow down to accommodate the older devices. This means that Wi-Fi 6E devices can take full advantage of bandwidth, spectrum, and speed improvements of 6 GHz without competing with any non 6E devices. So basically, if I could solve this congestion issue, which has really become quite the bane of my existence, it would indeed be worth it for me. Which brings me back to the start of this video and how this is not so much a versus video anymore but a what you need to know to make the right choice in router video. If you are someone who has not upgraded to something that says Wi-Fi 6 on the box, unless you're going for the Wi-Fi 6E version, I'm not really sold on the idea it would be an upgrade for you, especially if your upgrade is only about a $20 or $30 more than your previous one. And if you're looking to buy your first router, I'd encourage you to save your money until you could afford one of the Wi-Fi 6E versions as it appears they bring a lot more of value to the table, which is what I personally plan to do. Save my money until I can buy one of them and then run it through its paces and after that I'll do another video going over my results. If you got value out of today's video, please subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell to get notified when my videos go live and like the video.